Hey guys, this is Malkuth1974 coming back at you with another tutorial. When you start the game, this is what pops up. You get your home world established. Mine looks like it's called Pua. Pua. P Poa? Poa. Poa. Woa. Hoa. I don't know. Anyway. And in here you can change some of your stuff. This I want to mess with this stuff because you don't want to mess. Don't hit this button. That would be very, 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 very bad. Because that would basically abandon your home world and you would be screwed for the rest of your life. But you can change the name of Poa to Poa. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. It's your game. Uh, you can go to system map. It will actually show you uh, like the different uh, systems in your thing. You got your star map. System map, star map, system map. Click on it, it won't do anything. So don't think about it. Just say okay. So, Sword of the Stars 2 is a turn based game, so nothing is actually going on. I can sit here and I can go to the bathroom for 15 minutes and I'll come back and this thing will still be spinning aimlessly with a question mark. This will still be blinking and everything will still be the same. So it is turn based. If you want to end your turn, you just push this little button down here that says end turn and it will go to turn two. Simple enough. Uh, while we're down here we can cover a few things. This again down here is the chat button. That's something new they've added. It's blinking. It's annoying me. I don't like it. Stop blinking. Okay, so that's how you make it stop blinking. You click on the global part. Awesome. Oh, look at this. So, change your star map view mode. This is an extremely important thing. And I'll tell you why. Normal view is what we're looking at right now. Okay? When you switch to survey view, this is basically systems that you have surveyed. We'll get into that later. Provinces is province provinces is actually a sphere of influence that each of your planets have. And this is actually interested, I didn't realize this, but they have actually if you start with three colonies, it looks like they they automatically uh separate them into separate provinces. So, we'll get, we'll get into that a little bit later what that means. Uh, support range. This is how far your ships can go on missions. We'll get into missions later too. I know there's a lot of stuff to cover. So, uh, sensor range. This is how far you will actually start. Uh, if an enemy bunch of ships are coming at you, once they get into this range circle, you will be able to detect them and be prepared. I can tell you right now that. Um, for some races this is pretty good for other races you won't even notice it because they'll be right here and the next turn they'll be at your home base so don't yell at me when you say my cool I didn't see them coming well it's because every race has a different set of rules when it comes to uh, FTL travel so some are slow some are fast to start off but they don't get any faster during the game so yeah it's just you want to increase this to actually see the AI. And then, you know, the whole reaction thing is kind of... See, see, it's blinking again. I don't like that. And terrain. Uh, I just, just, yeah, it just shows you the different types of weird things that can happen in the game. I don't ever use this. I don't even know what it's there for. So, we've covered this little lower left-hand corner. Now we're going to go over here. This right here... It says little tool, tool tip. It says display the event history. It's kind of cool. You click that. And during the whole game, it will actually keep from turn 1 all the way up to turn 50 million. It will keep track of what happened each turn. Like research-wise, attack-wise, who attacked you, um, what you built, uh, how many times you had gas, uh, how many times your empire had gas, all that kind of stuff, you know. So, that. Yeah. Also, it's in the ticker, so you'll see it down here. Turn events, ticker. You can actually click right here to make it go faster, or you can bring it back. It doesn't have to be there, it can be over here too. Anywhere between here and here, you can click to make that go fast. And you can have up to like 50,000 ticket events during the game, so this is why this is a useful thing if you just want to do a quick survey of what happened. Uh, this right here is actually the in game tutorial. You click it and it'll tell you how to interact with everything. Um, I know I'm not telling you what to click, but pretty much you left click everything. So, 
So it says left click to interact with user interface. Uh, left click starts to select a system. Right click, hold, right click, hold, and move the mouse to rotate the camera. Oh, I guess I should have went over that stuff. Use the mouse wheel to zoom the camera. Ah, okay, we'll go over that next. Here we go. Let's click that. Uh, or click, don't click that. Or whatever. All right. So the click on an item in here, you just left click it. The click on an item like a planet. This one is not surveyed, so we don't get into that. So we'll just go to one that's surveyed. I can see all the information on the information panel in the left-hand corner. Um, if I right-click and hold right-click and move things around, I can move because we're in space. Everything in space is 3D. Woo! It's not a flat surface, so don't get confused. That's what a lot of people get confused with, so are the stars, too. This is space, all right? We're not playing on a flat surface. And the mouse key, the mouse, the middle mouse button. If you you can zoom in with it. Wow, look at the oh, it's got a little fart thing going on there. And then you got all the way to the right. So that about covers that I would say. Let's go back down to here. Uh, menu. This brings up your main menu. You can save your game. You can go to options again. You're still limited to the same things you were limited to in that. If you want to really change your options. Like your display size and all that gooba gooba gooba, you have to do that in the actual startup uh, page when you click the sort of stars two icon. Uh, auto options. We can get into this. This is actually kind of neat. This is called the automatic play options, uh, and what it means is that if I click on this, it's off by default. Is that when you build things like platforms, minefields. Uh, anything really that would go into the defense of a system the game will automatically place it for you I probably don't think it will do it well so I would do that myself not too sure but it's up to you you got your hotkeys you can change all this stuff uh, I never change them because I don't know but alright and obviously resume game alright so now we've covered everything down here what's up here not a whole lot this says it's waiting on me. Basically, it's kind of like saying it's waiting for me to push the end turn button. So let's get to the bread and butter of things. I'll get rid of that. Up here, and this is pretty much the picture I told you about. Your icon. And up here we have this nice little pie chart here. And we have this little uh, thing here and the question mark right here. All this is your research, your money, your everything. So. If you click on your portrait, nothing happens. Blah, 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 blah. But if you click on this, this opens your the little pie chart here, opens the Empire Manager screen, and they're always changing the screen. So this is what it looks like as of this. This is, uh, the game has just been updated with the uh, Enhanced Edition, so. What we have here is the Security tab. This is the main ta tag to change these options down here. So you got your main tab and then you got your little smaller tab. These are for like intelligence missions, like counterintelligence. Uh, this does a lot of different things. Uh, it even controls your colonies and how much uh, money they make, if you can corruption or not. So as a humans, you need to have security. Uh, you can... Uh, stimulus is you're basically your money. So nothing in stimulus right now because we don't have mining yet but you actually do need to have stimulus on when you start trade what that will do is that will make independent traders instead of you making your own uh, trade ships uh, the, your own empire will start making their own trade ships and it's the same with colonization instead of you making the colonization uh... individual citizens will start making their own colonizations and they will go out into the universe and establish their own colony but the caveat of that is that they could possibly become an independent colony or they could join you one or the other so it's up to you how you want to treat that savings per turn you can change that and it will change how much money everything gets out so if you want to actually save money during turns you go towards the right if you want don't want to save you want to put money more into stimulus and security and shipbuilding and stuff like that then you go all the way to the left all the way to zero which would actually be bad because that'd be you losing money so if you come down here this is basically how much money you owe during the turn so 255 whatever blah blah and your commitments it's all the same uh, it says my fleet maintenance is 105 105 credit 105,000 credits 
its station ma ma maintenance is 150. So this all equaled up is 255, 600. We go down here to the summary. Tells you your government, your research, your expenses, your trade income, current savings, and your projected savings during the next turn. So, what does all this mean? It means right now I have right now I have 512. Let's just go back before we can show you. Up here is 512. That's what I currently have in the bank. When I push the end turn button, what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with about five. So sometimes it changes. It matters what's going on in your build. But for now, it's going to say 571,126. So that's what I'm going to have next turn. But let's say I can change that right now. If I go like this, you can tell this change down here. So now all of a sudden, my current savings is 512 and my projected savings is going to be the same. But what's actually going to happen is I'm going to actually lose money because I'm not paying for my maintenance and stuff like that. But this one up here is actually cut into government and research. Research is purple. Government is green. Do not get confused by that because it actually shows research purple, government green. All right. So if I go all the way to the right with this, that puts more money into research, less money into government. As you can saw, as you saw, it all shrunk there. So if you want to increase your research, have faster research, that's the way to go. But please be in bear in mind: the less money that goes in the government, the less money you have to pay your maintenance costs, your colony costs, your station invoices, all that stuff, and you can actually start losing money. Here, we have what's called special projects. This is if uh, you find special things in the game. You can go into what's called a special project. You got to put, actually put the money into it. Did I cover this whole thing? Yeah. So you, this is your population, uh, your average biosphere, your morale, your economy, bases, fleets, number of fleets, number of ships. Over here, you have your colony tax income. We have three colonies. That's the default you start with. If you want to change your tax rate, default is five. This will make them get up to about 90% happiness. Uh, if you change it, you'll get more money, but you will also upset your population. And then you can have things like revolts and have problems with stuff like that. Alright, so if we want to go to government, there's no way to choose your government in Sword of the Stars. What happens is I don't even pay attention to this thing. Um, a lot of people do. But you get certain uh, benefits to being playing a certain way. So if you're a massive assholic di dictator and you're taxing people to death, this right now kind of neutral. This might go to you know being more of a dictator, which I don't. Let's go to the research screen. If you see up here, this is what we're not researching anything right now. So we have this little uh, circle thing going. You can click on that. You can't click on that. Never mind. If you uh, click on the little, let me redo that for you. There's a little uh, what the beaker thing here. If you click on that, you can go to your research. In your research area, it's pretty simple. Well, I mean, I can't go through all the technologies, but I can tell you how to navigate this whole thing. If you, there's two ways to navigate through here. You can either click your little button on the right or the left, and you'll go to all the different uh, categories of technologies you can research. Or you can just click on them down here with a little uh, button. Uh, so if I want to do something like, let's say, I want to usually you want to start with uh, engineering or C3 technology. So we'll go to engineering. I'll click on the button, or I can just manually go there. Uh, actually, we're not going to do. Yeah, we can. So this is where the game gets confusing for a lot of people. I click on this is the ones with the little green circles around them mean they've already been researched. So I already have cruiser technology. If I click up here, I now have a thing that says research tech. Okay? If I click that research tech, I will automatically be able to start researching that. But there's a little special feature in Sword of the Stars 2, love it, hate it, whatever you want. Some techs, you can, let me find one here. Some techs you cannot research right off the bat. Okay, and here it is. It's called study feasibility. This is what makes Sword of the Stars game supposedly individual each time you play it. 
Study feasibility means basically if I click this. We will look into it, Director. Exactly. I'm going to start researching if I can actually research that. So it'll be a couple turns. We'll actually go through it right now. End turn. Feasibility study oh, completed. There we go. So, feasibility study completed. This means I can actually study it. But sometimes when you do this, you'll get it like at 50% or 0% or 2% or 75%. It's totally up to you if you want to start researching it. The lower the, the percentage, the lower the chance of you actually getting it. And then you can just start researching Full funding if you received, want, director. And you're all set. Thank so you. So let's go back to the research. Okay, so you can still move around while you're researching something. Obviously, we're researching this. It's got the progress bar. You see the white thing right there, and it's got the little orange. Every turn, that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you go down here, this will uh, let you view, uh, like I talked about, the special projects. Special projects would be in here. You'd be able to click on it, go OK. You would have to have the money into the special projects. Uh, salvage projects, same thing. If you get into a battle and you see a human, like uh, or whatever, it's something you, you'll see a salvage project. Click on it, say okay. This is just a tutorial thing for that. All right, we've covered that. So the very next symbol is called design chips, and this will be another whole thing. But if you go into design chips, you can pretty much choose anything in here, menu context wise uh, you can choose cruiser uh, right now I only have drone and salt shuttles but you can have dreadnoughts and all the other types of ships in here uh, right now I don't have any drones uh, r the list of ships that I currently have are right here you can click on them if you uh, click on the little X here that will actually delete it you don't want to delete it so we'll do like kinda like that so basically when you click on this I could change this ship any way I wanted to uh, ship design is going to be a totally separate thing, tutorial, because we can't just get into one huge long tutorial. So that's how you move around that. And if you make a new design, which basically the, the second that you start switching stuff around in here, it's uh, it's a new design. You just hit submit design, name it. Yes, sir. Do that. These schematics and make now them it's in called handy. what's called a prototype. So a prototype is just nothing more than it's going to cost you more to build the very first ship in the series than it would do an individual ship. You can get to different things. Uh, one of the things you can do in here is you can go to the weapon test thing and you can actually see how your weapons fire. All you got to do is Target click blocked. on that and you will fire all the we weapons. That's how that works. Just go to back to get out of there. Um, that's about it for the basic operation of this. The next one is your diplomacy, and if I don't have anybody up here, but, but diplomacy in uh, Sword of the Stars is pretty simple. Um, you need points to, that's what these are up here, to actually do treaties with people, and we'll get into diplomacy later. The station manager works for in the system you're in, I can upgrade things on my station. So. When I came in here, I just clicked on the naval base. Don't do the upgrade part yet. The naval base. And now I can add like command modules, docks, repairs, sensors, warehouses, and combat. Okay. Right now, I can upgrade the station. The only way to upgrade the station is I have to have a construction ship in orbit. Obviously, I do use start out with a construction ship. So if I did the upgrade, it would upgrade it. Um, once you upgrade the station, you have to uh, get a certain amount of modules added to the new station before you can upgrade it again and you'll be all set and you can do that with all the different stations you have right now everybody starts with a naval base over there these are all the worlds you can go to the different ones they'll show you uh, these are systems and these are worlds something you need to do really uh, this is your fleet menu it shows you all your different fleets in here that are in uh, this system so and click on them. You can uh, just go constructors or colonizers or supply, whatever. So that's what that means. Uh, this is the creation mode, the province creation mode. Just follow the thing on how to make it. I can't do it right now because I already have the provinces. But and this little button right here is your encyclopedia, which will lo load up all kinds of information about the world, the different types of things you can do, the different races, stuff like that. Uh, let's cover what things mean, for the humans at least. 
So, when you start out a game, you have your colonies that you're already colonized, you know about, but some of these places you do not know about. So you gotta do what's called a survey mission. So you just click on the planet, like this, with your left click mouse, and then you right click and you get this context map that comes up. It gives you a uh, survey or strike. We don't, we're not going to attack anything there, but we do want to survey it for we know. But I can actually look at this right now and know there's no planets there, so that would be actually a waste of my time. You still want to survey it, though, eventually. But this one does have... You, you, you can tell if you click on a planet how many uh, bodies it has in there. You just don't know anything about them. So, left clicking on it. I know there's at least one planet here, so let's go check it out survey uh, what pops up then is a menu of all your ships that can survey all ships can survey all a survey is is one ship you need one ship for a survey and that is a command ship so obviously all these can survey but I, I don't want to use my construction fleet or my colonization fleet to do surveys so we would send out the first fleet Yes, Director. He's we'll return way. with your survey data. He'll take a certain amount of turns to get there, and that'll be cool. That will be cool. Colonization. I can't colonize anything in my home planet, and I'll show you why. Oh, because it's a gas giant, so that's actually a bad example to give you. Theta 2, in my Theta system, I can colonize. Let's take a look. So what we're going to have here is... A climate hazard so this is important for humans and most other races other than the lower uh, the climate hazard is 139 the higher this number the worse the climate the, the, the more expensive it's going to be for you to colonize it so usually a good general thumb is that if it's over 300 in the beginning don't bother later on when you get more uh, colonization technology you can start researching. This number can actually be positive or negative, so be do be aware of that. If it's negative, you still have to fix the climate. Okie dokie. If you want to colonize a planet, it's the same thing. Up down here, we uh, left, we uh, right clicked, and we had the context bar come up, but we only had survey and strike in here. If I click on a planet that I've already got surveyed, and I do the same thing, well now I have a whole bunch of different things that we can do. I can uh, colonize it. I can evacuate the whole system. This is if for a special event like a supernova happens. You can evacuate all your population and send them to a different planet. Uh, I can send. Uh, I can do a patrol. I can build a station, and I can do the battle manager stuff. So, to colonize it, I push colonize, and what would happen is my first colonization fleet is in range of Theta. He's up here in Poa. I would just click on him, and I'd go. Confirm. Yes, and Commander. And now he's going to go colonize we'll get them settled. that planet. It's going to take from 1 to 5,000 turns to do it, but that's how colonization works. That'll, guys, that'll get you guys off to a start. So, survey. And last but not least, in here, open system, closed system means that you do not want. I, yeah, that has to do with uh, population, certain things, uh, alien populations, stuff like that. I do believe, not sure. That's something new they added. Uh, if I want to build ships, I can go right in here. Uh, Shipbuilding is uh, system specific, so you got to be aware aware of that. It's not empire specific. So all you got to do, if you want to build a ship, okay, you just go to uh, thing, add it to invoice, and you'll add one. It'll tell you it's going to cost me seventy thousand. It's going to cost two turns. If you're building a new fleet. Be, be aware you do have to have command ship in each fleet no matter what so if I added that to it uh, that I need a couple supplies with it for the supply ships uh, increase its range and then it'll tell you how much this is gonna cost it could take eight turns submit order construction order placed and commander and that's how construction works repair if you want to repair things automatically uh, basically all I do is I repair all Confirm repairs, and you're all done. It might take you a certain amount of turns to do it. You repair everything if there's a lot of damage in there. Fleet manager. This is where you can set up your fleets. I can change fleets. I can I can put ships into other fleets by just dragging them to the uh, the other fleet. If I drag the whole thing, all the supply ships will go into that. 
I can also do individual by hitting that little uh, icon here to open them all up. Uh, be aware that all fleets have a certain CP point, so the more ships I add, I, I just hit the CP point, so now I can't add any more ships. It'll give me a do not comply. We do not comply. So that's how that works. If you want to build fleets, you want to create a fleet from scratch, not moving fleets around, you just go to create a fleet. We have to look for an admiral. Admirals all have different uh, traits that you can do. So you want to put an admiral as uh, what fits his trait. Uh, it's like if I wanted to build another survey fleet, well, he's already in a survey fleet. It says, uh, it shows what fleet they're in right here. Like this first, second. Uh, if I want to build a, this guy, this guy's a good colonizer. So if I, he's, I want to build a colonizer ship, you just create, I can't do anything right now because I don't have the command ships, but, any new ships, but that's how you create fleets. Basic rundown of that. Over here, you can actually set up where your ships are and how they go. This is a construction ship, so that's why it's so big. Uh, you can move your ships around, so when the battle screen starts, this is the formation they will be in. Uh, you can have predefined formations down here. Whatever suits your thing. There's actually three different planes. You got the top plane. So if I want ships up here to be above all these ships, I can go like that. You got the lower plane if you want them below. Default is the middle plane, if you guys are wondering. So that's how that works. Over here it shows you the, the, the ships that are in this menu right here. Ships that get added to, if they're over here, they're automatically out of the fleet formation and when the battle starts the game will automatically put them somewhere. So it is in the best interest to put your uh, your valued assets out back and have your, uh, your warships out front if that's the situation. And that about covers the basics of Sword of the Stars 2. Um, Battle Manager is an important thing. I didn't cover that. Battle Manager brings this little baby up. What that means is if I build satellites and such things like that, like in my home system, I can have uh, 43 CP points. This is for defenses, by the way, for my home system. That's because of my naval station, by the way. That gives you more CP, if you're wondering. Um, so basically what this means is that if I built a bunch of satellites, I th different things are worth different CP points, but like satellites, uh, stuff like that are worth like one CP point. So what I can do is that if I had a satellite here, I would drag it. And if I wanted to put it next to POA, I'd put it right there. Then I'd grab a second one and I'd put it right there. And then I'd grab a third one. And I try to put it right there, but it wouldn't work. You know why it wouldn't work? Because even though there's 43 CP points for the whole system, for this particular box, there's only two. So that's what these numbers mean. Two CP, CP points each. So when a, the battle starts, this is where the stuff will start. And you can also put fleets in here if you have fleets. I'll show you how that works. Uh, my attack fleet. Say this is an attack fleet. I would drag him out. I'd put him there. And that is where he would start when the game started. Which is a good thing to, ha to learn if you're under attack. If you go to this menu of the systems that's about to be attacked, it will show you where the AI is going to come in. It'll say uh, incoming fleet, incoming enemy fleet. And I'll have like a red arrow here. And what you can do is you can move the fleet that you want over there to intercept it. So you know that your fleet will be there. When he comes, you, your fleet will be ready to intercept him. So that's how this works. And that's about it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. We will talk to you guys later. Uh, as always, subscribe, comment. helps me out. Thank you, guys. Malkuth, 1974, out.